Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. I'm so excited that you stopped by today because I've got a really fun camera shaped box card that I want to show you and the flash really lights up. I think it, it turned out really cool. It's a double interaction there. Now today's video is part of a blog hop and we're all uh, making cards and different projects that light up using our power pack kit. This kit, if you haven't seen it before, is I think the fastest and easiest way out there to make your own light up cards. So I've got all of the information down below for links to the different designers in the blog and also uh, contest details so that you can enter to win a power pack kit of your own. I'm going to show you how I made my card here and I do want to let you know I'm going to show you how to use SVG, um, SVG cut files with the scan and cut. I know there's confusion as to whether or not you can actually do it and how to do it so I'm going to walk you through that. If you don't want to see that part go ahead and skip ahead to 13 minutes in the video and that'll uh, show you the light up part in box assembly. So the first thing you're going to do um, is download an SVG uh, cut file. Um, you'll just buy them all like like we buy stamps and instead of them mailing you something you'll get um, a, a folder that you can download and once you click download you can open your file manager and then you should see that the file is there in your download folder I like to create a new folder on the side just so that it, it's easier I can move it into and it, it's easier to find everything for me so I'm gonna split the screen there and I'm gonna create a new folder you just right click create new and then folder and I'm calling it camera box card then I can go over to my download folder grab the, um, the file and move it over into that new folder and I can close that and then I'm just going to open up that camera box card folder that I just created and you will see that there is a zip file in there that's the one we downloaded and we're going to right click and then go down to extract and then I'm extracting into subfolders just to, it keeps things um, a little more organized and from SVG cuts you get a picture you get written instructions and then they separate the cut files uh, based on the the pattern papers or the uh, colored papers that you would cut it out with it's it's really convenient to have it all separated for you so you can just um, cut one one at a time uh, based on the papers that you want so now all of my SVGs are on my computer and we're going to open up our canvas workspace this is free software that you can use um, when you get a scan and cut you just go ahead and create an account and then you'll log in and then uh, you're going to create a new project. So I'm going to open this up here. And then we're going to find this little button here that says SVG. And you click on that and you'll get a little pop-up window. And you're going to open up the folder that we just created. That's why it's easier than um, easier to have a, a folder to keep it separated there. And then I'm going to open it up and remember that had a couple subfolders in there and I'll open up till I get to the one that has the SVGs and then I'm just going to pick one and this will be the first one and I'll click OK and it loads it onto the map there. See how that works? Pretty awesome. Now I'm going to give this project a title. I'm going to call it um, camera box card. I think I call it black trim or something like that here and you'll just type it in and then you can go ahead and click the download button and that will put this folder on or I'm sorry this file onto your computer and again it'll be in your download folder so when you click download um, you're going to download to PC there you do have the option um, to buy a card and connect wirelessly I haven't done that um, so I'm just going to download it to the PC and then I'll take a thumb drive plug it in on the side of my computer and then now I'm going to show you where that folder is so go back to your file manager and then back out of here and we want to get to the downloads again and I'm going to split the screen and I'm going to open up the thumb drive there just so that I can drag and drop it over and then you see the camera box uh, card well I, I passed it up so I'll have to go back up to it <laughs> just a second here I left this all in real time for you 
Um, I named it camera box black trim, or I think camera box card black trim. So I'll grab it and I will just drag it over and drop it onto my thumb drive. I'll click move here. So now I've got the first cut file and you can see that it's been converted to an FCM, which is what Scan and Cut uses instead of SVG. So it's very simple. And now um, if you wanna save this, it's just so that if you ever come back into the Canvas workspace and you wanna pull it up again, um, what you'll do is click overwrite project. I don't know why they call it that instead of save. It should, I think, just be a save button, but they call it overwrite project. So you can do that and then it'll be there in your projects next time. And then I'm gonna click new project, and then I'm gonna click the SVG again, and it's sticky, so it's already gonna open up the file that I was in last time. And then I'll just grab the next file, hit okay, and now I've got the next parts here. And then I'm gonna repeat the process. So I'll name each one, I'll download them, and then I'm also gonna save them to um, the projects in my canvas workspace and it's just going to put all of these folders into um, my download folder on my hard drive there and you don't have to move them all one at a time you can move them all at the end which is what I'll do here I just wanted to walk you through one real quick and after I've got all 10 of those files this this um, project has 10 different files I'm going to go back into my file folder here it's already split and I'm just going to highlight each one so you highlight the first one press down the control button hold that and then click each one that you want to highlight and that'll grab them all for you and then you can drag them and drop them over into the thumb drive and I'm just going to make sure that they're all there and now there was an extra file from the last project that I was um, using my scan and cut for so that's why you see an extra one there. It's no big deal. I use that thumb drive for my scan and cut all the time. So they're all there. And now before I remove my thumb drive from the computer, I do wanna right click on it and hit safely remove. That way in case any of the folders are still copying, it'll tell you don't take it out yet. So once um, it says that it's safe to pull out, you can pull it out. And then you plug the thumb drive into the side of your scan and cut. It doesn't matter if your scan and cut's on or off at this point, uh, either way is fine. And then I'm going to show you my, my scan and cut sits on top of a dresser and I've attached a towel bar to the side that I've got an S hook that just holds my um, mats there for me. I've also got um, casters on the bottom of my dresser there so I can pull it out from the wall if I need to because the mat does need to extend um, in front and behind the machine a little bit. So I'll take my mat and I'm going to go ahead and just stick down my first piece of pattern paper. The cut file that I chose um, is sorted out into multiple pieces because the original sample that they made the card with, they used several different types of pattern paper. I'm just going to use one type of pattern paper and then I'll use a few solid color cardstocks. So uh, I'll show you how to add them all in there. The first thing I'm going to do is turn on my scan and cut and then I'll press the load mat button and you may have to press it a couple times. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit pattern. Once I hit pattern I want to hit save data and then I'm going to hit the USB. And now you can see it sees all of those files that we transferred onto the thumb drive there. And I'll just pick the first one, hit OK, and that puts it onto my mat. And then I want to grab a few more because I'm going to cut them all out of the same paper. So I'm just going to hit add and repeat the process. I'll grab the next one here and then I can move it down because it will want to put it right on top of the other pieces there. I'll hit OK. And then I'm going to go back and hit add again, grab the save data, grab the USB, and then I'm going to get the next piece that I want to put on there. Hit OK and it layers it on top again. And then I'll just drag it down, put it where I want it. A stylus or a, a blunt chopstick like this is handy for, for moving um, things around on that screen. That screen is kind of small. So I'm just gonna go through the process a few more times, get everything that I want cut out of that one piece of pattern paper onto the mat so I can cut it all out at one time. 
think this is all the pieces, but I think I'm going to double check here and make sure. Um, I will be cutting the envelope out of the same pattern paper, but I need a separate piece because it's so big. And yeah, I'm just going to double check here, make sure I've got everything that I need. And I do, so I don't need to add anything else. I'll back out, back out one more time here, and then we'll hit OK. And then we'll hit cut. Now before we actually cut, I want to make sure that I adjust my blade depth. Usually I cut cardstock so it's it's up higher. Um, for pattern paper like this, you can move it down to about three. And then we can go ahead and hit cut. So it's going to cut out all of those pieces. There is a little uh, countdown at the top that tells you how many minutes it'll take to cut it out. But the scan and cut is very fast and it does an excellent job. I love this machine. I use it all the time. Once it's done cutting out all of those pieces, it'll tell you that it's done. You can click OK. And then we'll just press that mat button again to unload the mat. And you can see that it's kicked it out of the machine. And then this is my favorite part. You reveal all of the cut pieces. <laughs> it's like magic. Uh, and because this is pattern paper, I'm not going to try to pull this up with my fingers. If it's cardstock, it'll it'll come off very easy, but pattern paper is a little thinner, so I'll use that spatula just to get those pieces off. And then I can go ahead and clear off this mat, and I'm going to load another piece of this same pattern paper to cut out my envelope. And I'm not going to make you watch me do everything, because the rest of them are all going to be the same way. So we'll delete the pattern, and then we're, and that'll give us a fresh mat. And then we're going to go back in the same way, and we'll grab the next file. I'm grabbing the envelope here, hit OK, OK, we'll hit Cut. Um, before I hit Cut though, I do need to load the mat again. And so I'm just uh, going to stick it in here. I apologize for my shaky camera movement here. But I'm just going to get it back in here. I do not need to adjust the blade depth again because it's already set for this paper. And then I'll hit Load Mat and it'll grab it, and then I can hit cut. Eventually I'll hit cut, here we go. And then we'll hit start, and then it's gonna cut out that envelope. And the envelope, it's, it's pretty cool with this cut file. It not only cuts the outline, but it will also cut some little dashes for my score lines. And I just repeated the process for each of the pieces, and you can see those score lines there that are cut in there. That was my uh, frame for the card piece. I've gone ahead and I cut out the pattern paper, some silver mirror paper. I've got two kinds of black paper because they want a trim piece and a, a decorative piece. And then I cut out a bunch of extra hearts from the yellow and the darker teal paper. And I am going to save this one piece, uh, which normally would be discarded, this silver piece because I'm going to put my light, it's going to cover up the light that I use. Um, I also have a little scrap of vellum that is going to go behind that silver piece there on top of the light, and it'll just diffuse the light. And then we'll use that power pack kit to build the light. Now, I used... Um, this set from Lawn Fawn to go ahead and stamp and emboss a push here button. It's, it's just a little piece of cardstock and I cut it out with a coordinating die. And then I've also gone ahead and stamped out um, my sentiment pieces. This one says smile. It's stamped and embossed. And then there's a little camera in that same set. I've stamped it, embossed it, and then I colored it in just to save some time. I also stamped that camera in um, on the envelope in the little empty spaces there. And my sentiment is going to say, have an unforgettable birthday, which I thought works perfect with the camera. Those are both uh, heavy doodle sets there, and I've got links to everything I've used in my blog. So I stamped those and embossed them with silver powder. And then I've also gone ahead and cut them out using the strips of ease, that smallest one. And then I used these banner um, dies from Lawn Fawn because they have that, the fishtail ends there. 
You can do that with scissors and your trimmer. Um, I just find that I tend to mess it up, so I like those dies. I've also got a blue rhinestone and a little piece of yellow ribbon. Those will be decorative elements on the card. And then I also grabbed this die from Reverse Confetti. It's a strip of hearts. And I cut out um, another piece of yellow and a piece of that dark teal just so I can have some more hearts to play with. And I'm not going to end up using those, those long strips, but I didn't know it at the time. I do find that it's easier to manage little parts like this if I have dishes. So I, I've kind of separated those into little dishes to keep on my desk. And now I want to show you a trick for the uh, trim pieces here. They used a black shiny paper to cut them out. I didn't have any shiny black paper, so I'm going to make it shiny on my own. I just cut those pieces out of plain black cardstock, and then I will smash them into my Versamark pad. That's a clear sticky ink. I'm not worried about going all the way to the edge um, with the ring here, because only the inside, about half inch of it, will be visible. So I went ahead and I got ink around the inside for sure, and a little bit on the outside. And then I added clear embossing powder on top, and I'll melt that with my heat gun. And that gives us the start of a shine, but it, I wanted it to be a little bit thicker. So I'm going to come back in and give it a second coat, and just repeat the same process here. So more Versamark ink and then more embossing powder. And the more times you do that, the thicker and shinier it will get. There's also ultra thick embossing powder, which I didn't want to use for this. I like the way that this is just, it, it looks like a vintage camera to me. So I'm also gonna do those two little black strips and the ring will cover up the center portion of those black strips. So I'm gonna hold it in the center with my tweezers and I'm repeating the same process. I gave it two coats of clear embossing powder and I'm not worried about it not being shiny in the middle. So let me just uh, assemble the uh, the ring here. This is the basically the, the camera lens part. And I'm gonna use some PVA glue. I keep it in a fine line bottle because it helps me apply the glue. And I will glue the ring pieces together. And then I went ahead and I used a black um, polka dot kind of embossed paper that I will um, glue the trim pieces onto. So I'm just going to glue those right on top and then the ring will end up being glued on top of that, but I'm not going to assemble that yet. Before I go too much further, I do need to put the light together for the front of the card. So I'll show you that in just a second here. And it's handy to have an acrylic block to hold things down when you're using wet glue like that. So here's where we're going to start putting the light together. What I need to do first is outline um, where the silver part is going to be. The silver part underneath that flash there is going to cover up the light. And then we also need to figure out where the button is going to go. So I'm going to use um, the power pack kit here, which has a battery and switch unit. That's what this is. Uh, it has the battery holder and, and a switch there for you so you don't have to build that out of paper and foam tape. It makes it really simple. Those pads on the side are marked positive and negative and you're just going to stick it down and you're also going to stick your LED sticker, your light sticker, where you want it and then you'll connect the pads with copper tape. It's very easy. So I want to figure out where my switch is going to be and it will go underneath that black um, cover there. And once I figure out where I want it to be, that's so that I know where the button will be, uh, I'll just trace it onto the paper. And then I'm going to grab my eighth inch hole punch and I am going to punch it through the silver here. That's going to give me a hole for the light to come through, but I want to cover up everything underneath it because the circuit is kind of, it's, it's not pretty. So I've marked with my pencil where the light is going to go. That's the center of the Chibitronics here. And these are marked with positive and negative plus and minus signs too. And so I'm just going to take the light and I will line up that little yellow dot in the middle with the pencil mark that I put on my paper. 
and I'm marking it here for you so you can see the plus and the minus. And then I want to go ahead and stick my power pack down. You can use strong tape like this. This is uh, super tape. Or you can use a wet glue. Just make sure that the glue doesn't seep out onto those silver pads there. And you can go ahead and stick it down. And then um, something I've been trying lately, which seems to help, is to go ahead and buff off those pads just in case I have any fingerprints or oils or anything from my fingers. I want to get those pads nice and clean before I put the copper tape on top. And also when I'm putting the copper tape down, I am trying not to touch the bottom of the copper tape, the sticky part, because I don't want to get oils from my fingers or skin cells, anything that would um, cause extra resistance so that the electricity doesn't flow as well. I want to give it as clean of a connection as possible. And we're just running the, the minus side to the minus side from the light to the power pack. And then we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the positive side. So I like to fold my tape rather than tear it, but this copper tape does have conductive adhesive. So you can tear it and stick it on top of itself. Um, the more times that you do that, the more resistance you add to the line. It shouldn't be a problem, but if you do it too many times, then, then you can have um, too much resistance and the light won't shine as bright. So that's pretty much all you have to do to, to make a light up circuit there. Pretty easy, right? And now we can cover it up and make it look pretty. So I've got PVA glue in a fine line bottle there again. That's that same glue. Once it's dry, it does not conduct electricity, so that's perfect. And I will glue that silver piece down. And now I want to glue that vellum strip onto my bigger silver piece there, just so that it, it can diffuse the light. And I'm going to pop it up a little bit from the light so that there's, there's a little box basically around the light. So I put a double layer of foam tape all the way around that frame and then I can go ahead and stick it down. I also put a double layer of foam tape on the, the black piece there so that it has room and it sits right above the button there. And I want to put the, the uh, lens in place and I'm using just a single layer of foam tape here. If you want your foam tape to curve, just, just peel off the release paper and it'll bend and form nicely for you. Then I can line it up and stick it down. And now I want to glue down the push here little button there. Oh, well, I'm going to glue it on top of the button. And I just used more PVA glue. And then I'm also going to put the smile part of my sentiment right in that little window. And then the cards, um, the front of the card is pretty much ready to go. Now I can prep the next two pieces for the box card. This is the back and the sides, and the Scan and Cut did go ahead and cut those score lines for me, but when it's thick paper like that, I do want to reinforce it with my score pal first. So I went ahead and, and scored those lines, and then I can just go ahead and fold them up, and I will glue on my pattern paper pieces here. These are the back and side pieces that are decorative. And then I've also got another piece for the center portion of my box card here and it's very easy to see where they line up. There are written instructions. There's a video from SVG Cuts so you can see how to, to assemble this but it, it does come together very simply. And I'll get those little silver pieces glued in place and then before I assemble the box card I want to put the ribbon in on the side here this is optional, you don't have to add it, but I, I think it's fun, it's like a camera strap. So I'm just going to slide my ribbon in, tie a knot, and trim it down. And then I, I do pull the ribbon through so that it's, it's on the outside there. And now I'm going to just add glue to the flap on the center portion there. And then I'll close up the left side of the card. And then I'll repeat the same process for the right side. And then um, I'm going to fold it back and forth a little bit to make sure that it folds flat in either direction while that glue is still a little bit wet. You've got some wiggle room. And then you can see those, those two tabs on the front is where the, the camera part will go. The top of the camera will go on top. And this comes together really quickly once we've got all the pieces cut out. So the hard part was 
was transferring and cutting out so many different pieces of paper. But it's no harder than if you were cutting them out um, with your die cut machine, or your, I'm sorry, your your Big Shot. Um, and it's considerably cheaper. This, this file was only $2.50, so much cheaper than a die set would be, right? So now I'm gonna just add in my decorative elements. That little silver piece is basically the, the lens, and that rhinestone is gonna go inside right on top. And it's fun because it, it's deep in there. That's, that's on the center portion of the box card there. So you really do get a lot of depth with this box card. I think it's fun. And now before I add all of the hearts and the rest of my decorations, I do wanna fold up my envelope here because I wanna make sure that when I glue some of the hearts on top that stick up, that I'm not gluing them up so high that it won't fit in the envelope. So I'm gonna fold the, the flaps in here and then I will add some glue. And then before that glue sets completely, I'm gonna slide the card in there. Because I added so much foam tape, it, it's a little thicker, so I wanna make sure that I didn't glue the, the sides of the envelope too tight together. And I didn't. And you can see there's about three quarters of an inch or so from the top of the card to the fold for the envelope. So I know I can't go any higher than that. And then I am just gonna use uh, some glue and some foam tape to glue on the hearts and the sentiment pieces and it comes together really quickly You can um, add as much or as few details as you want This is the part that's going to stick up a little bit more. So I'm careful not to go too tall with it and Once I've got all of the bigger pieces in place I'm gonna come back in and just fill in a few more spots with those smaller little hearts that I cut out. Kind of using them like I would use sequins or um, enamel dots, that kind of thing. And once I'm happy with that, the card is done. Now, the pattern paper that I used for the back of my card is, uh, is a little dark. You wouldn't be able to see my message. So I went ahead and I wrote this the message for the card on to that yellow heart there and then I can just glue it in place like I glued everything else and that way my husband will be able to read it. This is his birthday card. Don't tell him. <laughs> uh, so that's it. That finishes up this card and if you're still with me thank you so much. I know this was a rather long video today but we did go through from start to finish um, downloading your SVGs and then converting them for the scan and cut and we also built an LED circuit and a box card so we had quite a bit of information to cover so thanks again for sticking with me now don't forget that today's video is part of a hop and if you hop along with us and show some love to the designers that have come up with some really really cute cards I think you're going to be happy to see them um, you'll also be entered for a chance to win a power pack kit of your own just go ahead and comment and I've got all of the contest details down below um, along with uh, links to the other uh, videos and blogs in the hop. I've got more information for the power pack kits if you'd like to see more about those and I've got links to the products that I've used. If you like today's video go ahead and click subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss any new videos and I've got a playlist here with more light up cards for you. So an extra big thanks for swinging by today and I'll see you here next time.